Okay, so today's pepper review is going to be on the Gotorn pepper. So this is the plant. Now this plant does get bigger than this. I've had this plant grow as big as somewhere like 18 inches, two feet if I remember. I grew them last year. I just didn't do a review on them, but I did grow them. And th this pepper did get a lot bigger too than what you see here. So I'm not sure what happened this year. These were from the package, so it's not necessarily uh, you know a hybrid or a cross or anything like this came out of the package most of what you see I'm doing reviews on for 2017 came directly out of the package so not sure what to say about it other than it is what it is so but this plant normally gets about 18 to 24 inches if I remember I grew it last year probably get bigger if you put it in the right spot and give it good soil um, I don't remember if it's hot to tell you the truth I didn't get very many peppers off it last year, and I didn't get very many this year. But then again, this year was kind of a flop for peppers, so I can't really say too much about the the go, goat horn. I keep saying cow's horn. Uh, it's not cow's horn. There's goat's horn and cow's horn, and then there's goat's weed. Goat's weed is the black cobra. Then the cow's horn is something completely different. It's a huge pepper, a horn type of pepper. And then, this, then there's this goat's horn which is like a cow's horn but a much smaller version but they do get a little bigger than this i've had them get a little larger than this now that one over here that i'm holding is already way too ripe for me i'm not even going to eat that one i'll pick one of these orange ones and i'll actually pick them all actually let's get them all off of here well let's do the plant profile first now this plant is just about dead we've been getting freezing weather two frosts already or three frosts we got so we're way past due on it it's starting to affect these plants some of them get affected more than others this particular one seems like it got cold more than it wanted to and it's wilting badly it's probably going to die but yeah we've been getting frost so i really got to get these peppers off of here and out of the greenhouse if i'm going to save any but i'll try to do a plant profile on you for you now the leaf type is a regular leaf Nothing special about it, just a regular capsaicin, regular leaf. There is some purpling at the nodes. See, we're going to zoom you in. Probably can't focus because this camera is a piece of junk these days. It just doesn't work anymore. Uh, there is purpling at the nodes, but there's no purpling in the stems. Stem is waxy smooth. No flowers, unfortunately. And just some fruits. That's about it. That's all I got pick these grab that one we'll grab that one i may have may as well get them off here because this plant is it's gonna we're, it's just a matter of time before the frost really starts coming in let me lay them down over here and uh it just takes them all out it's just gonna once the frost comes in and it mushes the pepper it's like putting a pepper in a freezer if you put peppers in a freezer they get mushy a lot of people tell me, oh, just freeze your peppers up, man. Freeze them. I ain't freezing them. I don't like freezing them. I don't like the way they taste afterwards. Unless you're cooking a soup or a stew, then you don't care if it turns into a mush. But you know, generally, I don't like to freeze my peppers. If anything, I dry them out. That's what I like to do. Because when you reconstitute them with water, they taste a lot better. So they don't, they're not harsh or anything like that. So let's grab these. And let's walk over, give you an idea what these look like. Okay, so this is the goat's horn. So many peppers with the same names. It gets really, really confusing. So that's a goat's horn. It's a small version of the cow's horn, which is much larger than this. Cow horn gets absolutely huge. So this is the goat's horn. Let's go and turn you around and do a taste test. All right, so here we go. Back at the greenhouse. I know I'm kind of bouncing around. It's kind of cool outside, but it's warm in the greenhouse. Kind of weird. You know, I could still come in my greenhouse while it's cold out and take my coat off and do my pepper reviews. So that's kind of a nice little 
little bonus to have in the greenhouse. Now, had I sealed this greenhouse up a lot better, I could probably get all the way into November. Solid, but it's not really sealed. There's a lot of leaks that come in, a lot of cold air comes in. So that's really not good for your, your plants. But anyway, here's the goat's horn. Goat's weed. Goat's horn. I, I always... There's so many peppers that use that name. Goat's weed, goat's horn, goat's tongue. Goat. I mean, it gets confusing. This is the goat's horn. And it looks very similar to the cow's horn, except it's very small compared to a cow's horn. A cow's horn gets absolutely enormous. This thing's nowhere near as big as a cow's horn. And I believe it's a hot pepper. I don't know offhand. But anything with horn in it usually means that it's hot. Kind of looks like that pepper you see that the Italian, the Italians wear on their chain. They wear like their neck chain on their thing like that. And they have that little thing hanging. And usually that's a pepper. Not a, actually a horn. It's actually a pepper. And that, it looks like the kind of pepper that they're hanging from their chain. I don't know what variety that is actually that they're representing. But it does kind of look like this. So anyway... Uh, let's give it a bite and see what it tastes like Right out the gate. It had a weird taste like a chemical type of taste. It did have that soapy flavor a little bit But there was more like a chemical type of a taste, but not like a bad chemical like bleach or anything nothing like that but a slight Different kind of a taste it didn't had like a peppery taste, but the undertones were like some kind of fragrance or something I'll take another bite. There is a little heat on this too, by the way very strange flavor on this thing. Very strange. It has its own unique flavor. There is heat on it. I'm getting ready to describe the heat in a moment. I just want to get through the flavor. Had In the beginning, it had a little bit of a soapy flavor. But not real bad. Not, it wasn't like offsetting or anything. It also had a very nice, pleasant, fruity flavor. But lightly though. Very light on a fruity flavor. It was sweet because I guess I let it ripen. Had a nice sweetness to it. And then it had its own flavor. I can't describe that flavor. It's very unique to the pepper. It tastes like a pepper, but its own flavor. It's not tasting bad or anything. It actually tastes very good. It kind of hangs out towards the back of your tongue. Hits that region of your palate, which is a very nice effect, by the way. I do like that. And then there's the heat. Now the heat, I can't put the heat right now. I already ate past it, the seeds. I can't put the heat really past 800. It might go to 1,000. It could potentially go to 1,000, maybe even 1,200. But it's not going to be like a scorcher. On a, on a Scoville scale, I can't rate it that high. But as far as the effect of the heat, it's all tongue on the top, mostly around the end of the tongue and around the sides of the tongue and the tip of the tongue. Nothing in the back of the throat. Maybe a slight, very slight effect on the roof of the mouth. I lick my lips just to see if it gets the lips. Sometimes it doesn't affect the lips. Sometimes it does. It's all tongue. There's really nothing on the lips. Maybe towards the back edge of the tongue on the outsides. Maybe slight bit there. Really nothing. I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's a very nice tasting pepper. It's not a sweet pepper though. It does have a little heat on it. it this is good for people who are beginning to try to eat hot peppers. And you're looking to... You're looking to get involved with eating them a little bit more and work your way up in heat. I would say this is probably one of those kind of peppers you'd want to start with. If you never really ate hot peppers, work your way up the scale. Buy something low in heat like this. And just kind of work your way up and just slowly eat them up until you can get to that point where you're at your limit. Don't push it too much because not everybody can handle a million SHU peppers. I know I can't. I can handle them to some degree, but I can't, like, munch them down. It... So you want to build your levels up before you get to that. You definitely don't want to just, like, jump right in. I'm going to eat a Reaper and jump right in and eat it. That's a very dumb idea. So this is one of those peppers I would suggest you start with. And then there's some other people who really don't like hot peppers that they really can't handle the heat. But they like a little bit of heat. They put pepper on their food and stuff like that. But, you know, black pepper... But they don't eat these because they don't know. It might be too hot for them. And But the flavor, when you're making meats and stuff like that, and you want that pepper flavor with a little bit of heat in it, you're going to have to give in a little bit. And if you don't like too much heat, this is that kind of a pepper. It's a very low-heat pepper. 
All right, so that was your pepper review for the uh, Gotorn pepper. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.